What is BMI? BMI is your body mass index, which is a measure of your weight in relation to your height. A healthy BMI is in the range 18.5 to 24.9. A person with a BMI in the range 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight. A person with a BMI of 30 or above is considered to be obese. When will BMI be calculated in pregnancy? Your BMI will be calculated at your first antenatal booking appointment. You may be weighed again later in your pregnancy. You can also calculate your BMI by using the calculator on the NHS website. What are the risks of a high BMI in pregnancy? Most women with a high BMI have a straightforward pregnancy and have healthy babies. However, being overweight or obese does increase the risk of complications for you and your baby. The higher your BMI, the greater the risks. If your BMI at your antenatal booking visit is 30 or above, you may be offered consultant-led antenatal care. Your healthcare professional will discuss with you any additional risks for you and your baby, as well as how these can be reduced. Risks to you and how to reduce some of these risks. Thrombosis is a blood clot in your legs, venous thrombosis, or in your lungs, pulmonary embolism which can be life-threatening. Pregnancy itself increases your risk of developing thrombosis. If you are overweight, the risk of developing thrombosis is further increased. Your risk for thrombosis will be assessed at your first antenatal appointment. You may be offered injections of a medication called low molecular weight heparin to reduce your risk of thrombosis. Gestational diabetes Diabetes that is first diagnosed in pregnancy is known as gestational diabetes. If your BMI is 30 or above, you are three times more likely to develop gestational diabetes. You will be offered a test for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks. If the test shows that you have gestational diabetes, you will be referred to a specialist for further testing and treatment as required high blood pressure and preeclampsia. Being overweight increases your risk of developing high blood pressure and preeclampsia. If you have a BMI of 30 or above, your risk of preeclampsia is two to four times higher. Your risk of preeclampsia may be further increased if you are over 40 years old. You have had preeclampsia in a previous pregnancy. Your blood pressure was already high before pregnancy. If you have these or other risk factors, your healthcare professional may recommend a low dose of aspirin to reduce the risk of you developing preeclampsia. Mental health problems All pregnant women are asked some questions about their mental health at their first antenatal booking appointment. Being overweight slightly increases your risk of developing mental health problems in pregnancy and after birth. Risks for your baby. The overall likelihood of a miscarriage in early pregnancy is 1 in 5, 20%. But if you have a BMI of 30 or above, your risk increases to 1 in 4, 25%. If you are overweight before pregnancy or in early pregnancy, this can affect the way your baby develops in the uterus, womb. Overall, Around 1 in 1,000 babies in the UK are born with neural tube defects. Problems with the development of the baby's skull and spine. But if your BMI is 30 or above, this risk is nearly doubled, 2 in 1,000. If you are overweight, you are more likely to have a baby weighing more than 4 kilograms, which increases the risk of complications for you and your baby during birth. If your BMI is 30 or above, your risk is doubled from 7 in 100 to 14 in 100. The overall likelihood of stillbirth in the UK is 1 in every 200 births. If you have a BMI of 30 or above, this risk increases to 1 in every 100 births. If you have a high BMI during pregnancy, you may need additional ultrasound scans to check your baby's development growth and position. 
your baby's growth is normally monitored during pregnancy, using a tape measure to record the size of the uterus. If your BMI is more than 35, then it may be difficult to be accurate with a tape measure. So your healthcare professional may request additional ultrasound scans. All women in the UK are offered an ultrasound scan at around 20 weeks to look for structural problems that your baby may have. This scan is less accurate at picking up problems if your BMI is raised. How else can the risks to me and my baby be reduced? A healthy diet will benefit both you and your baby during pregnancy and after birth. You may be referred to a dietitian for specialist advice about healthy eating. Trying to lose weight by dieting during pregnancy is not recommended. However, by making healthy changes to your diet, you may not gain any weight during pregnancy, and you may even lose a small amount. Exercise. You will be offered information and advice about being physically active during pregnancy. Physical activity will benefit both you and your baby. If you have not previously exercised routinely, you should begin with about 15 minutes of continuous exercise three times per week, increasing gradually to 30-minute sessions every day. Some examples of healthy exercise include swimming, walking and pregnancy yoga. An increased dose of folic acid. Folic acid helps to reduce the risk of your baby having a neural tube defect. If your BMI is 30 or above, a daily dose of 5 mg of folic acid is recommended. Ideally, you should start taking this a month before you conceive and continue to take it until you reach your 13th week of pregnancy. However, if you have not started taking it early, there is still a benefit from taking it when you find out that you are pregnant. There is an increased risk of complications during labor and birth, particularly if your BMI is 40 or more. These complications include your baby being born before 37 weeks of pregnancy, preterm birth, a longer labor for your baby's shoulder becoming stuck during birth, shoulder dystocia, an emergency cesarean birth, more complications during and after a cesarean birth, such as heavy bleeding, anesthetic complications and wound infection. While you are pregnant, you should have a discussion with your healthcare professional about where you will choose to give birth. Depending on your individual circumstances, you may be advised to give birth in a consultant-led unit with easy access to medical support. Pain relief. All types of pain relief are available to you. However, having an epidural can be more difficult if you are overweight. You may be offered a discussion with an anesthetist to talk about your choices for pain relief during labor. What happens after giving birth? After giving birth, some of your risks continue. By working together with your healthcare professionals, you can minimize the risks in a number of ways, as discussed below. If you developed high blood pressure or preeclampsia during pregnancy, you are at increased risk of high blood pressure for a few weeks after the birth of your baby. And this will therefore be monitored. You are at increased risk of thrombosis for a few weeks after the birth of your baby. Your risk will be reassessed after your baby is born. To reduce the risk of a blood clot developing after your baby is born. Try to be active as soon as you feel comfortable. Wear special compression stockings, if you have been advised you need them. If you have a BMI of 40 or above, you may be offered blood thinning injections low molecular weight heparin treatment for at least 10 days after the birth of your baby it may be necessary to continue taking this for six weeks how you choose to feed your baby is a very personal decision there are many benefits of breastfeeding for you and your baby if you want to lose weight once you have had your baby you can discuss this with your healthcare professional Planning for a future pregnancy if you have a BMI of 30 or above. Whether you are planning your first pregnancy or are between pregnancies. It is advisable to lose weight. By losing weight you 
Increase your ability to become pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy. Reduce the additional risks to you and your baby during pregnancy. Reduce your risk of developing diabetes in further pregnancies and in later life. Reduce the risk of your baby being overweight or developing diabetes in later life. If you have fertility problems, it is also advisable to lose weight. Having a BMI of 30 or above may mean that you would not be eligible for fertility treatments such as IVF under the National Health Service. Crash dieting is not good for your health. Remember that even a small weight loss can give you significant benefits. Thanks for watching this video.